So we have today Hello. Uh, Irene Hoff. Um, yes. I've known I Irene for quite a few years. And yeah. I think she's, um, I think you're just a great guest to this because you're such, a, for me, an inspiring person, an interesting person. Um, Thank you. So just a lovely human being and a joy to, to always talk to. Like I've always enjoyed your company so much. Um, Thank you. So I want, I would like people to know about you, the people that haven't heard of you. Maybe some people have heard of you. I'm sure some have. Um, and I would like to know if you could just, just tell me a little bit about you. Where did you grow up? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Irene Hof. That's my uh, complete name. And uh, I'm Dutch. Um, I grew up in the north of Holland, which is called Friesland, where we have our own language, not a dialect, but a language. No, I didn't know that. And um, I left... Eh? I didn't know that. There's another language yes. in Holland. Yes, yeah. So I'm, uh, I speak two languages. To my parents uh, at home, I spoke Fries, and then in school it was Dutch. But if I'm alone with my thoughts, it's still in Fries. So it's really rooted deep inside of me. Oh, amazing. And uh, to, yeah, to, to, I, left, uh, I left Holland, I think, around 25 years ago already. Mm -hmm. So let's not make it too long <laughs> where I've been, but I moved. Uh, I did a project in Jakarta where I was a, um, a consultant uh, for companies in training and development. And I uh, lived there for around eight years. Then I found my ex-husband um, uh, in Jakarta. We moved um, to Hong Kong for two years, where I set up a company for production of uh, kids' products. So we were close to China and producing, um, yeah, also already some, some arty stuff, but also um, uh, clothes and... Um, an, inflate, an inflatable changing mattress to change the diapers of, uh, of the kids. And after that, I moved to Vietnam, still having that company. And then um, at a certain moment, um, I broke up with two aspects in my life, which was my uh, husband and which was that, uh, that company in Hong Kong, which was already a big success, but I felt like I, I can't do it anymore. And um, after the divorce, I took my two kids and I moved to Bali. And that was nine years ago. So they were uh, back then five and eight years old. Wow. And uh, here I was with some suitcases, my computer and my coffee machine. And uh, starting a new life. <laughs> and yeah, quite miserable, I think. It was very challenging, very, very challenging time. Feeling all alone in the world. Why did I not decide to go back to Holland? But yeah, I mean, Bali was calling. And I visited Bali uh, often already because I lived for a long time in Jakarta. So it was kind of my back garden. And I spoke Indonesian already. And yeah, I don't know. It was just an island with um, a lot of mystic and magic. So I felt this is the next part of my journey. That's so funny, all the things you just said, because... I interview the last interview I interview another friend of mine who has lab interiors and we talked about yes. it she was saying the same thing uh, but it was calling me it was calling yes, beautiful me. And we also talked also with her about all the magic that is in Bali and maybe we can talk a little bit about that next now that you just mentioned it what mm -hmm. why do you think there's so much magic here well I think, uh, first of all, what they say is that the position of the, uh, the island, it's a kind of a position in the world that I think it's on, they call it, there are certain uh, chakra energy centers all over the world. There's a, even, it's mapped out and we are on one of those um, uh, energy chakras of the earth. And I, I really strongly believe in that. I think the other thing is the religion. Um, what I love here is that many people are very mindful and there's a lot of um, uh, upacharas, right? Uh, ceremonies, 
which um, you know whether you believe in it or not it's about um, um, connecting with yourself and it's about connecting with your community and fast forward looking at the situation we are in at the moment with with this uh, world I think those are one of the things that a lot of people in the world are lacking uh, we, we, we are often not part of a small community anymore. It's big communities and, and, and uh, a lot of things are, um, yeah, become a bit alone and objective. There's, I think, less love, le less interaction, less knowing what other people do. Let's, let, it's within your family there is, but I think it used to be, we used to come from tribes where we were all part of one, uh, one group. And I think that's one of the things that we need to bring back into the world. So, yeah, I think that mindfulness part here in Bali, I, I, I just love a lot. And it's, I think, and for me, it's in general, the feeling that I have, I think you know that as well, you drive also a motorbike, is that when you're on the motorbike and you're just, you know, you're just going through these rice fields, you just feel like, oh man, I'm alive. Those, those moments, I feel like, you know, they, they are the best. It's not about scoring another project. It's, it's about that or when you, you, know, you walk on the beach alone or when you see your kids surfing and they are shouting at you, mom, mom, and they see a turtle uh, 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 floating in the water, then, then my heart just, you know, it just pops out of my, my body. I, I, one of the key words in my life, uh, which I find very important, is the word freedom. And here I, I feel I feel free. And when I feel free, I feel like me. It's so funny you say that word as well. I was um, chatting to a friend and she said something. She's back in Australia right now, but she wants to come back to Bali. And she said, in Bali, I feel free. Or, or she said something, I can't remember now, like Bali is freedom. And I said, yeah, it is. Yeah. Bali feels Maybe that's why so many people love it. And maybe that's why some people go a bit crazy. Um, they don't know their limitations. <laughs> no. Absolutely. But, but Bali is freedom. There's some freedom yeah. here that is not in many other places uh, in the world. What, why do no, you but it also feels like, and I, I think you have the same, is that we both kind of reinvented ourselves. We, we both chose... Um, a very creative uh, uh, um, job, right? And um, I think the, I'm, I'm, for the people who do not know, I, I'm, among others, I'm an artist. I create uh, mixed media uh, art. And uh, I really feel that in Bali, I, 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 I could become, you know, well-known. I, I, I could just become the person that I wanna, wanted to become. Well, if I would have chosen this in Holland, you know, people would start with, well, did you, not, did you do the art academy? Um, and, I, 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 you know, it's, it's, you have to kind of defend yourself for where you are. Well, while, you know, I never did any formal uh, training. I just did. And I, I love that about Bali. It's, you know, I think every day you can reinvent yourself also because, which is good and bad. A lot of people come and a lot of people go, right? So, so me being um, a single mom, I need to continuously, you know, find new friends in order to have a social life, which um, which is also a fun part because you can be wh whoever you want to be, right? Nobody will say, "Well, you used to uh, be this and now you're that." Really, you know, nobody judges you in that. They just take take you for who you are. Yes, that's true. Actually, there's a there's a lack of judgment here, which is yeah. Which is so refreshing. Yes. And I, and I say the same thing as you do. I would have never done volunteers anywhere else in the world. It just wouldn't have happened. Like definitely in Australia, it could have never eventuated because no. it's just for so many different reasons. And here I had the freedom to say, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to start. Yeah. And whether it's successful or not, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it because oh, I but, but it's completely you. And I remember when we first met, I, I, you just started and I, I just liked what you were doing. And I, I, I think I asked you to make some shots of, the, of my art or the house. I don't, I don't even, I think the art. I think it was the art. And, 
Yeah, and, and I still see you sitting at the stairs, you know, like kind of, you, you didn't even know yet what you were doing, but you just said yes, and you just started, and you had no idea yet what, what direction it would uh, take. And here, here you are. I mean, uh, yeah. Yes. You came back, remember? You came back to yes, shoot the house. You, I said to you, I want to show your house. Your house yes. is amazing. <laughs> and you said, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and then we did another one, and anyway, yeah, and it, it's, I think we have kind of the same uh, creative uh, development in uh, Bali, both of us. Yeah. yeah. How did you, how did you come about you becoming an artist? How did that develop? Um, well, I always had it in me, but my mom said, uh, better uh, choose a, a profession that you can earn money with, so I, I didn't pursue it, and when I lived uh, in Jakarta, I started to make uh, bird announcement cards in, um, uh, in uh, Illustrator and started to sell those and set up a website. And yeah, I think it was born a bit there. And then when I was in Vietnam, I had my first daughter, Noah, and um, I made a painting about her first two, three years. So it was a bit of collage where she was born in Hong Kong and I put her name in Chinese and I put her uh, a date in it. And then there was a, a kind of a event and they asked me to make a couple of these kind of collage arts. So I, I did and I exposed them to the public and everybody loved them. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then I slowly started uh, to do that. But the collage, of course, is a different level because you kind of tune into somebody's life and I collected all kinds of symbols and things that meant something to them. And the next stage was really like, okay, now I'm going to make my own art. And that's one thing you can make one or two, but then you need to think about how can I turn one or two pieces into a series, which is quite challenging when you have never done it because, you know, they need to look alike, but they do not need to look alike. People need to recognize it. And, I, I remember that that was really a, an, an um, interesting phase, uh, becoming an, uh, an artist. And I, in the beginning, I, was not even know, I didn't even know why I was making what I was making. But later on, and especially now more and more, the words are coming as well. So I understand what it is that, that I do, what the meaning is of the art, what the sim symbolic is of the art. And... I think what, you know, where I am now, both are equally important, the image as well as, as the message. And just for the people who have not seen my art, it's, um, it's mixed media on canvas. And I use a lot of paper prints uh, in it, which I make myself. And um, yeah, there's a lot of thicker layers in it. And I mostly portrayed uh, animals. And um, yeah, the, the, the biggest subject, well, you've seen many of those are uh, women. Uh, women portraits yeah have I said um you another interesting fact about you which is and also, also your paintings and artworks are incredible and um very recognizable now you have your own style that's for sure um is that you are kind of like a <laughs> healer clairvoyant I don't I don't know I don't want to classify it but you have this kind of psychic abilities, um, which I also love about that, about you, mm -hmm. because we can talk yeah. always about all these things. <laughs> I love all that yeah. stuff. Um, but how, did, how do you bring that into your art? Yeah, well, where I am more now, I feel more uh, guided. So I, I create based on what I feel in my stomach and whether it feels right or not. And sometimes I have something completely different in my head and then I end up in an opposite direction. So, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of, you know, you never have tangible, uh, 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 you know, that you really know that that is what it is. But, but me from, from my body, I can feel that. And I... Uh, a while, already a couple of years ago, I, I knew that I would um, have healing capacities, uh, which started after my divorce. Uh, often, what I also tell people when, you know, a crisis or a challenging situation 
whether we like where we don't like it but those are the biggest opportunities for growth and the biggest opportunities to let go of the old and um, uh, yeah receive the new and uh, after my divorce i i knew that i would uh, be more able to uh um, yeah, tune into the yeah intuitive uh, 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 intuitive energies. So yeah, I you know a healer is not always a good word because a healer means that I rule and I dictate whether I can heal you or not. But in the end, it is about the other person's ability to heal themselves. And as well, let's keep it simple. As a healer, what you do is you facilitate. So you open uh, uh, the channel, uh, the energy channel. And that energy channel of healing goes through my body and then I can give it to somebody else. And it's, it, it's mostly in my uh, uh, hands. And sometimes people say, do you do, you do Reiki? And then I, I, I don't. I, I just, you know, I just put them on and then I put them on somebody's uh, body and then they start to make all kinds of movements. And I have no, no clue what they are. I just follow my hands, which is a very strange sensation in the beginning because they are leading me i'm not leading my hands at all and i already know when it's the last movement i already know this is the last one and then it's done um but i at the moment i'm not really um uh, i'm only doing it with friends and with um uh, my uh, kids uh, only when i really feel that i'm able uh, to do it but i know that that energy is also in in the art and one of the things that I decided here in Bali is to have my gallery at home. Um, uh, I sell in worldwide galleries in New York and in Miami. I'm in Canada. I'm in London. But here in Bali, I really love to uh, have the people come to my studio because then I can feel the people. I always feel that every painting that I paint is destined for one person. And they already know it. They just need to have to find each other. And yeah, it sounds maybe a bit crazy, but I think two out of three people when they come in they are emotional they they whether it's the energy here or the story that i tell about what it is that i do and there's often a little healing session of an insight that i get for people or i can see where they are blocked and i ask if it's okay to put my hand on and i can feel it already now when i talk i can feel already you know it's just floating through my body and i just give them a message and it's been said that if I look at the core thing that I, why I'm born and what I do is to give people hope and inspiration. And art is one thing, but I'm also working on a book now. Um, uh, I'm working on a beautiful new series. I'm now call it uh, Powerhouse of Soul Boosters, but beautiful, strong women that I hope to turn into Oracle cards. So there is going to be, you know, more and more products that will derive from what I do to spread the energy. And one of the movements, well, how I call it, the movement that I have is called in the total movement. And it's about rebalancing the energies. And I'm not a feminist, but I, I feel that the masculine energy and the feminine energy is out of balance in the world, in men as well as in women. And that the ego has taken over and the the feminine energy has been killed in many occasions through lifetimes and we need to go back to that power of intuition the power of wisdom the power of creativity the power of flow uh, uh, back to nature Th that kind of elements we need to bring that back and i feel i'm one of the messengers uh, of that of that energy that is how i see myself i love that because we have um, we have talked about it before and you said to me I have no ego when it comes to my art. No. Zero ego. If you don't like it, doesn't Fine. bother me in the slightest, which I think is such, a, is such an amazing thing, first of all, because if someone doesn't like what I do, I'm like, why don't you like it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially I think when you put so much love and effort into things. Uh, but I think it's incredible because I think it correlates with everything you just said about you're kind of like a messenger and you're being guided into doing this, whatever art piece you do. And it's not about you. It's about that finding the right person to go to, uh, which is, I think it's just superb because there's so much ego 
um, attach to artists. You know, there's the I was listening to the, this podcast the there about uh, you know the suffering artist, and it always has to end up so badly. And this, and it's like it doesn't have to be that way. You know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. And especially when I, I have a feeling, and I really do feel like sometimes any artists, writers, you know, whatever art, art they do, so much, so many times, it doesn't come from them. It comes from somewhere else, and they are the messengers that put them in a painter or in a book you know but that is just what i wanted to say you, you you steal my words that you do not own your creativity the creativity it's the same as the healing energy it's channeled through you uh, and um i meditate a lot and i i really believe that that the highest level of creativity can be found when you stop thinking and and let that flow uh, uh come so indeed if if it's given to you then you don't have to have an ego, you know, you, you just let it flow and, and you let it go where it's needed the most for in terms of the energy. I'm uh, well, you know, that also I, I still need to figure out the details, but I want to do more prints as well. Um, you know, that, that the energy of the paintings can, can go to, to more people's houses. And because that's the only thing that I, I want to just go, let it go. The book that I'm making now is a, is also a very interesting uh, book. I've been writing in my Moleskine books for a long time. I've had a, uh, some challenging uh, years, which are beautiful for uh, inspiration. And I came up with around 25 life principles um, that I want to share with the world. I feel like, you know, I've, I've learned a lot. And um, next to giving it to my kids, I want to give it to uh, uh, more people because there's so many people and especially women who are struggling to find themselves back because they've given too much and are out of, uh, they have struggles in their relationship and they're only the care, they're taking care of the kids and the husband, but not about themselves anymore. And um, those principles I will uh, illustrate with um, uh, animals, but in a, in a very, yeah, a bit of a magical uh, environment. And they will all have... Um, a, a kind of a definition what I mean but they will also have a kind of a poem or a floaty beautiful a text that will inspire people to look at the art and to to feel it, you know from from their hearts what, what this principle could do for them an example for example one of the uh, paintings uh, it's called masterminder and you'll see a leopard hanging in a tree kind of meditating with a cat on top of him. And this is about the principle of meditation that I feel whatever you do in life, try to, you know, meditate and stop your brain and feel. Uh, and another one that I have is um, kaleidoscope perspectives. Yeah, it's here around the corner in my studio, which has uh, two fish swimming in the water and they have all circles around them. And this is about the principle that uh, we all live in our own truth in our own world. And um, if, I, if I say, for example, to you, I don't, like, I don't like your photos, it says nothing about you. I had to answer that. It says nothing about you. It says only something about me, right? Maybe I'm jealous or maybe I think, you know, how, how do you think you could be a photographer? You never did a training. It says something about me and, and nothing about you. And if people are more aware that everybody lives in their little bubble and I have green glasses on and you have blue glasses on, that, you know, you don't have to take things personal anymore. You can just let people be with their opinion and it's okay. Like how you would treat a child when they tell you something, you just yeah. let it be. You should do that with adults as well. You know, it's okay. Everybody can have an opinion. It's fine. Does it affect me? That is how, that is how, what I can choose. It's this thing when, where, you know, Buddha says, okay, I, um, I bought you a present and I give this present to you. And then you refuse to take this presence. Who does the present belong to? Well, to me, the giver, right? And that's the same with my anger. If I give my anger to you, but you refuse my anger, the anger stays with me. And that's the choice you always have. Yes. So I have yes. a couple of those life principles that will be uh, illustrated in this book, mm -hmm. hopefully by the end of the year. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I think you're, you're incredibly, I think you are incredibly wise. Uh, obviously, we've talked about past lives with you and about how 
you probably had many past lives because you are you're very wise and very as we talk there's no ego in you which is i think my favorite part about you you know <laughs> well uh, but you know what I mean there's no oh, I get it yeah, yeah. You know what I mean like this is no issues it's just never no drama you just what you are and this is what it is and if you don't like it so be it this it's just so yeah you now which is just it should be like that yeah makes life easy <laughs> it's like easy for your friends as well because you know what you get and you know what you know <laughs> Well, and I think it's, it's, you know, if something irritates me, you know, you just have to say it. One of the, the mantras that I do a lot is, is at the moment is, I am the, my truth, I speak my truth, I walk my truth. And I think as a child, I've been silenced a lot because there was a lot of, um, yeah, violence uh, in, in my in, uh, back home. So I always silenced myself. And I think only since maybe even a year, I, I dare to speak. Uh, uh, there to take more, you know, the stage. So it it took me a long time, you know, to 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 get where I am. And why why do you think uh, you suddenly started speaking again? Uh, because well, that is also what my art represents. Uh, I think as a as a human, we we build up layers that block us from who we truly are, and a lot of those layers are survival mechanisms. Like my survival mechanism was to keep silence or to create peace as soon as possible in the house, which, which meant that I could never really say what I wanted to say. But only, really, literally, only since half a year, I realized that that is what I've been doing for a long time. And now I'm starting to speak my truth, but not in a harmful way. I just speak from, from my heart. And if somebody, and you, you speak, I, I love you. You speak like that also. I mean, you 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 praise me, but I I also really love how you uh, you 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 are also somebody who's very honest and from the heart. And if you talk from the heart, then people people can feel that whether they don't like what they hear or they don't. It's again up to them. But if I would let's say if I would tell you something that I observe. I would tell it to you because I, I like to help you to mirror and to see what it is that you are doing. But if I feel that you get angry or whatever, I, I'll slowly pull back and just say, it's okay. you know, I'll just let it be for now because you're not ready yet to hear or you're not ready yet to resonate with it. And that's okay. And I try not to, it to be an opinion. I just try to examine it with questions and see, okay, what is it? You know, because often other people see quicker than you that somebody is that you are stuck in 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 a belief right yeah and if if somebody starts to tell you and you start to read i well i even had it a couple of months ago there was also an, an issue i will not not speak about the details but i got a bit uh, uh triggered by what he said and because i knew i was affected by it i said shit well you could be right even though i'm annoyed by what you're saying and then I said, well, I'm just going to try and see if I, I'm able to let that part go. And I, and I did uh, after meditation, that part was gone. And I could see that a lot of things shifted in my life. And so, so I always say we have a lot of beliefs, but those beliefs are with us to, to survive as a child or to survive in a situation. But if, but if you grow further in who you are, you have to let go of those old beliefs because they are going to block you. They are going to create illness in you. They are going to create depression in you. But if you stay on top of it, and if you're mindful, and again, meditate a lot, you'll you, you recognize it when it comes. I'm now also going through a phase, I don't know how you feel it, but in this time of year, I have a lot of um, memories of my childhood. And um, I just spoke to my mom, and I even started uh, to become emotional. And what I see, what I'm doing, I said, I'm letting... I. I how do you say it when, when you are uh, putting something with all these little holes, you're putting some food in and the water can go out, but that is, we say is safe in Dutch. When, when you, uh, when like you do drain, like a drain. Yeah. Well, it's not a drain. It's when you cook pasta and you put it in, in this thing. Yeah, in like a, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we say it's safe. Yeah. We say it's safe. Z A A F. Anyway. So uh, I said, I'm, I said I have a lot of emotion because I'm I'm letting go of 
um, let's say the, the, the sadness that I experienced uh, during uh, my youth. But I said, I'm also crying for the beautiful memory. So, so I'm letting go of the negative. I really can feel that. And, and what, what is staying are the memories when I played with my siblings. And, and I feel that, that because I, there is some blockage in my body at the moment, but I know it has to do with that. And I, I think a lot of people that I spoke to uh, in this time of where we are now, I don't want to use the word, it, it, it brings also, um, I don't know, a closeness to the, you know, your family and um, to your close friends. You just know who, who your true friends uh, uh, are. I don't know if you experienced that, but I, yeah, yeah. I've been a bit, how do you say that like going through the memories and the that songs and i don't know processing yeah. for sure yeah yeah well it's a it's a very introspective time for everyone i think yeah and that those times is when you whether you like it or not you are confronted with your current life situation uh with your work situation with your marriage with yeah. Uh, if you live in a city, if you want to live there, and with your with your family and and, and how yourself you, and yourself and how you got to where you are right now, uh, I think it's going to be. I I always, you know, people say oh, everything's going to go back to normal. My husband, he's a very cynical, <laughs> and he thinks that it's going to go back to normal because that's what's going to be. And I don't completely agree. I think we, that we live in Bali, I think we're lucky that we have escaped that rat race in a way. And I'm lucky to be here. Yeah. I think I, I have a feeling maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, that a lot of people are reassessing their life situations and where they live. And they're going to, I, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to move out of cities after this ends. Uh, there's going to be a shift in that respect of where do they want to live and how do they want to spend their lives. And, you know, so many people, especially I think across Europe, they're stuck in apartments in South America as well in Argentina, stuck in, you know, tiny apartments with two yeah. kids, three kids, not even able to go out. And I just think, oh my God, I am so lucky to be here, to yeah. have a garden so the kids can go out, you know, like just to, it would just, you know, that is not, that's not a life. That's no, not, that's not a life. No, but I, I, I agree with you. And, you know, let's say that it might not happen overnight, but I also always feel like, you know, try to advocate the life you, you want to see and the life you want to live. So, and I think there, there, uh, and that's the beauty of this island as well. There are a lot of uh, change makers on this island. A lot of, you know, young people who to, who try to make a difference, who try to make the world a better place. Uh, and I, uh, I'm part of that movement here as well. And I, I love that about this island. And I want to, you know, there's so many improvements to be done in this world because, like we said before, we are out of balance and we have not even touched the subject of the environment. And how that is affecting us. Uh, but the imbalance is about we are only taking and we are not giving. You know, and the giving is, is from the heart. And, and I think there are going to be a lot of changes there. And I hope it's going to be a change in the whole energy. Because that's being said as well. That the energy in the world is going to change. But before that's going to happen, there will be, you know, there will be um, a fight. You know, there will be... A, a conflict because of course the the people who want to see it differently are mostly the people who are filthy rich and uh, have a lot of uh, power but i dream very big when it comes to that <laughs> it's not a topic so yeah I, I i i am with you i want to be with you and i want to believe that that is where we're heading to a better world a, a way better world than we are now a reality that we we can't even think about yet how much better it can be because how many people are struggling already for such a long time? Why? That can be solved. We don't need to struggle, struggle that much. Yeah. But we are. Many are. Yeah, many. Many. Yeah. You, 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 are, um, you are a dreamer. Yes. Which I love. I am, I am too. 
<laughs> yes, you are too. It's hard for us in a way because we have big dreams, eh? <laughs> Constantly dreaming. Yeah, I know. Uh, but that's what I love about you. <laughs> <laughs> because you always bring it, I mean we have not seen each other in person for a long time but I always break my notebook when I talk to you because you always come with so many things I'm like oh yeah oh yeah yeah I need that oh yeah I need that too <laughs> and I miss you now even more so <laughs> I want to see you <laughs> yeah oh we do show you um, but my question was we are yeah, sorry as you and me but we're talking about you yeah you're a dreamer and how do you you know one thing is to be like so many people want to be artists it's like my dream is to be an artist and make money from my art so what do you think is the how do you make that happen how do you succeed as an artist um just how do you make a living from your art? Hmm. Yeah, I don't. Uh, it's for me. It is all integrated with how I live my life, so I can't separate it from who I am. And of course, you go through many phases, especially not having the formal training, being an artist. And I, I, I hardly know any other artists. I'm not interested, you know, in it. I, I often get interviews where I need to ask which artist inspires you, and I think, yeah, I don't really know, you know. But um, I, I have, you know, that principle. There's one principle, but that's a life principle that I use, which is the law of attraction. And in a very simple statement, it's called fake it till you make it. And I just posted one on my inner to totem movement. Uh, it is about uh, 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 dreaming big. It is about uh, uh, dreaming bigger than your reality. It is about telling you my better story. You know, let's say I, I, I did not sell anything uh, uh, for months. It's, I would not say to you, I didn't sell anything. I would say to you, oh, I can so feel it in my bones. There's sales coming. I can feel it here. I can feel it here. I can feel it everywhere. It's coming. It's coming. You know, that's a complete different way of looking at your reality. I'm not somebody who will exaggerate to say I sold five. That's not my fake until you make it. But Every morning, uh, I sit here in the back of the house and I visualize for around 10 minutes of all the things that are going to happen, collaborations that are happening, me talking, and you can laugh, it's fine, at Oprah Winfrey uh, show about my life, uh, me publishing a book, uh, me uh, making the, uh, taking the art under my arm, uh, going on a book tour, uh, uh, me uh, having a person uh, standing here in the studio and crying and thanking me for this amazing uh, piece of art. And I, well, I had one of those, by the way. She, her husband and she both saved uh, money and came here and been dreaming about my art for two years. She walks in and she really starts to cry. She said, I cannot believe that I am here. And she works for, um, she has a, fertil a fertility uh, clinic in Australia. And it was so beautiful. She picked one of the, the, the powerful women and she said, I'm going to hang it in the rooms because I know if the women will see the power of this art it will help them you know to believe that they are able to conceive a baby and i think yes this is why i do what i do and and i always keep these dream books where i write my my little dreams and i know you do the same and then you know you read back in one year think ah check ah check ah check and and you know that makes life fun it's a skill that kids have and what do we say as adults oh, you know that's not possible no, that's not the reality. My mom said to me, you can't live off of your art. Oh, yeah, I can do. I can live off my art. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you it's going to go further and it's going to go further. And not from an ego perspective, but just because I can feel it in my, in my body that that is just what is going to happen. So I completely believe that you can create your own reality by always monitoring the thoughts. What thoughts, you know, what thoughts do you allow in your head? And all the thoughts that are negative that you would... You know, not tell your best friends. Uh, if you talk to your kids, you always try to, to you know, su be supportive. Why not be supportive to yourself? Why not keep, you know, oh, yeah, well, I can never be an artist because I never did training or people don't recognize me. Then that will happen. But if I believe in my art, if I feel like this is just good stuff, 
then other people feel too because they will resonate with my energy. They will not resonate whether it's good or not. They will resonate with my energy. So it has nothing to do with whether the art is good. It's about how I feel about it. And that will attract likewise people who will have the same feeling uh, about the art also and about me. It's all energy. You're right. And I, think, so, I, I remember when, we, when I met you, you were kind of studying a little bit and yeah. we were both I think quite humble in a way and yeah. you know we'd kind of starting out and it was so much about you have to believe it to be it yes you have to believe that your art is worth this much money and people are gonna love it and it's just changing yeah. more than anything as you just said that mindset of, oh, would people like it? Or would people, no, no, it's forget all about that. It's about you believing it. And the moment yep. you believe that your art is good, that you are worth it, that people are be like, yeah, this is amazing and willing to pay a certain amount of money, I think things shifted for you. Yes, but that's why I said it's integrated in your private life as well. You know, you, you take the, that's why a divorce is important. That's why, you know, if you break up with somebody or if you're going to, through a personal crisis, they all help you uh, to become your more natural you. And when you are your natural you, 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 you don't think in, lim in limitations. But you still, you know, of course, you still take those steps. Uh, also, when it comes to uh, price ranges, you still make, take steps. You do the same. Yeah, you, and that's one of the things that I feel sometimes if you, if Bali makes you um, sometimes a bit smaller because we, we are a bit in a bubble, right? And there's a lot of people who come to Bali to get a, a good, good deal. And that took me a while. Uh, I think only last year that I, that I stopped thinking like that and think, okay, I need now to be ready for the world. Because, you know, if you go into a gallery, they take 40, 50%. So you, you can't be low anymore because you don't earn anything. And that's still a conscious choice that I, I mean, now like in New York, they, they, they really sell it for a high price that I still find difficult for myself to ask. And so I still need to do some growing there. But it, it needs to resonate with you. That's one thing. And it needs to challenge you a little bit. But if it's challenging too much, you need to take a step closer to, to where you are. Because you need to be able to feel it. That's the most important energy. If you can't feel it, you can't really attract it. Uh, but those are the energy, the energy things behind what I do. And the rest, it is also, I mean, practice for you also. I mean, you just have to make many paintings in order to become comfortable with what you do and know what the effect is of when I do it like this or the effect is of when I do it like that. That's, that's also studying, right? Yeah. Yeah, obviously. Yes. Practice and, and getting more confidence in yourself, but also yeah. believe that you are worth it. Yes, and that's, that's an easy sentence. And it has many layers. Oh, I know. And it's hard. And it takes time. Yes. <laughs> it's taken me a long time. And I know it took you a long time as well, you know, to yeah. be in our own capabilities and, and skills. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a oh, hard. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. So just to wrap it up, I just wanted to ask you this especially when now we talked about what's going on in the world right now lots of people have gone back to their original countries uh, during this time of uncertainties and many people have chosen to stay and i want to take just hear your take on why have you decided to stay in bali um because i trusted that Bali would be our best spot, our best place to be in terms of uh, safety. I think that was my first thing was like, you know, I feel like I have a kind of a marriage with Bali. So yeah, I feel like I would uh, abandon her if I would, if I would leave. Um, and the other thing is that my whole life is here. I mean, the house that I live in, I, I, I built myself 
my kids' lives are here, and I think we would be, uh, and my creation is here, and I think we would be very miserable if we would have gone back home, uh, staying with other people or renting. I mean, financially, it would also have been a lot of money if you would have rented a place there. So, I've, of course, I've given it a thought, and one of the considerations that I um, uh, had to make is that my mom um, uh, will turn 80 this year, and there is a chance that I can lose her. And I've been, that has been going through my mind that I have to accept that if I'm stuck here, I can't go there, that that's what it is. But I said yes to that also, that if that's, that's what happens, then, then I'll, I'll find my way to say goodbye to her in a different way. Yeah, but we all have made that, those considerations. And, um, and I feel I made the right choice. Yeah, I, I, I feel still very, very happy here. And I think, we um, for us it's quite easy to just turn off the phone and then you ha- you do not have to deal with any media. But I think if you're in your home country, it's everywhere continuously, and we can stay in our little Bali bubble. And I think that is what has saved us also here. We we have not really been in a big panic here. I think yeah, which I like yeah. because panic is 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 devastating for everybody. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think here it's um, you, we are in a little bubble, and yeah, sometimes it can get you know this is you know globally it's a disaster, uh, and even here I got to the point at, at some stages that I was in a bit of a panic. But as as you, as you said, I also felt like a marriage to Bali, like I'm married to Bali, and I had that feeling of I can't. Just abandon it. No. On this funny, I felt this. Yeah. And I was like, I just, I can't. I, it's like, it's like a friend. You don't abandon them when there is a fire going. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but you know, saying that, I still understand why so many other people have left, and they all have very valid reasons for leaving. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's always personal, those those decisions yeah, you make. And you have to... It's a feeling, you know, you, you feel a certain yeah. way. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Irene, Irene. <laughs> I've been saying it wrong for yes. years, which is so bad because <laughs> everyone says my name wrong. with your name. I know, everyone says my name wrong. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on this talk with me. Uh, it was so actually it was really nice to see you and hear your voice and talk to you again after it's been so long. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you too. Yes, more uh, than now. So thank you for that. Oh yes. <laughs> so hopefully we'll we need to, need soon. to inspire each other again. So yeah, as soon as uh, as we are back to normal, uh, we'll do that. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much for your insights and your and showing all your the other side that not many people know about you. It's really I find it fascinating. No, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to be able to talk about that because I, I I always find it easy to ask questions. So for me, it's a stretch to talk. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. <laughs>